Hey, what's going on, Twisters? We're covering the NHL trade deadline, which is supposed to be on Friday, but there have been a ton of trades that have broken so far today, and we're going to stay live for a little bit to see if anything else goes down. But as soon as I saw Casey Middlestat being dealt from the Buffalo Sabres to the Colorado Avalanche, who also acquired Sean Walker from the Philadelphia Flyers, I said, I got to do this, right? I got to take this live. Of course, we also saw Vladimir Tarasenko being traded from the Ottawa Senators to the Florida Panthers. In addition to, we also saw, uh, wait, wait, hold on a second. I'm going to get this one. There are so many moves. It's hard to even keep up with all this stuff. We had Mantha going from the Capitals to the Golden Knights yesterday. Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick are also going to the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for a first round pick and even more. And who knows what else could break because the one I've been having my eye on is Jake Gensel, and even the Canucks are reportedly interested in him and could even deal away Elias Lindholm as well. So there's a lot of crazy stuff happening here around the NHL trade deadline. It's fantastic to have you guys here, and uh, hopefully we have some more exciting news to uh, cover here on this stream. So we got we got Jaws here, Flying Fluffy Hockey. Congratulations on Vladimir Tarasenko. I know that, that Zito did make a move here for what has already been perhaps the NHL's most complete team, but you got to be a little bit excited with a name like that, a Stanley Cup winner and uh, someone who can add some scoring into the middle six. We've got Aaron hanging out with us here. We've got Jake. What's going on, guys? We'll see if the Minnesota Wild have anything to deal away. I haven't really heard their name come up much in trade discussions. Yeah, Tarasenko is gone. And, and what really surprised me, I made a me uh, members video today for our wonderful uh, supporting uh, folks there that, you know, with the Mantha deal and then the Tarasenko deal, I was surprised how the returns seem kind of low for those transactions. And yet then we see the Sealer deal. Phil or, uh, yeah, Philadelphia gets a first in exchange for uh, Sealer going to the Avalanche and the Avalanche are going to be a little bit more cap compliant now that they put Ryan Johansson on waivers, and they also just got Casey Middlestat. All right, good. I just wanted to make sure that we had uh, the chat working. Uh, your buddy was not happy about that, about uh, Tarasenko. I mean, I thought the writing was on the wall pretty early on that he would be in trade contention. Um, okay with it. He did the deal one minute before you were already scheduled to go live. Oh, because because weren't you doing like a review, a game review from last night, and then you switched over to that? But uh, I'm glad it timed out well for you. Yeah. So uh, we got, wow, 56 people here already. Fantastic. Well, if anybody's new here, we do cover major events like this in the NHL, the draft as well. We do streams during the playoffs. And then I've been producing more like historical content on, on this channel just to give you guys a different flavor of the NHL from all like the day-to-day -day coverage that you see from you know bigger channels and that sort of thing. But yeah, Sean Walker is gone. Um, and yeah, I thought I'd be doing this on Friday, honestly. Uh, but yeah, Sean Walker's gone to Colorado. They also get Casey Middlestat. I haven't seen what he's been doing recently, but Middlestat was, you know, he had himself a nice breakout season last year. Oh boy, I'm going to have to close out my browser tabs here. This was all for my video that I'm producing on the Hartford Whalers. But yeah, we can take a look at my, at my X feed to see if there's anything else coming up here in trade discussions we also have our fantastic discord community if you haven't joined that we have some amazing fans as part of that fans of all teams and they've been helping break news on this as well but yeah it's a one for one between Middlestat and and Bowen Byram and as soon as I saw that I was like wait where did this come from uh it's a shame because I mean Byram who knows like I, I thought that he could maybe be a bit of a star defenseman on a team like the abs, despite them having already one of the great uh, defensive cores in the NHL. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what the Canucks do here. I don't think the golden Knights are done yet. Whalers can't wait for that right on. Uh, not stating who was put on waivers. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen on, I haven't seen anything just on that, but the Oilers do cough up a first round draft pick. And I think like a fifth or something like that. Sabres now have seven left-handed defensemen. Whoa. That's crazy. Why is Johansson on waivers? I think that's to do with uh, a couple of things, like salary cap, just to you know keep them cap compliant. I don't think Middlestat is earning anything much less, though. Uh, but Johansson just wasn't producing all that much. And I don't know, maybe they talked it over with him and said, hey, look, if you want to have a chance to compete for a cup somewhere else, then maybe someone else can pick you up. I'm not entirely sure, though. 
But um, here, let me get my X feed loaded up for you guys on here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 84 people hanging out. Great. It's awesome to have so many fans of, of all teams, I would assume here, especially ones that are uh, competing for a Stanley Cup. But yeah, very busy day already so far here, two days before the actual deadline. That, that deadline will be Friday, I believe at noon Pacific, I, I want to say. I'm on Pacific time. Uh, we got Dean hanging out. Hey, um, nice uh, scoop up for the Golden Knights, only having to cough up a second and I think a fourth, right? While they have uh, their ailments, certainly. But yeah, I don't think Vegas is done just yet. Uh, yeah, so here's the official announcement for here. Let me zoom in on my screen here. That'll help you guys out. Uh, we've acquired the yeah, Say We've acquired Sean Walker and a fifth in exchange for forward Ryan Johansson. Oh, I thought they said he was on waivers. I did see that from a verified source, but maybe I'm not entirely sure. Um, maybe that was just a formality. And a first round selection in 2025. So let's check out... Um, cap friendly so we can stay up to date on that stuff spokane dude go abs hey danny dude i've been th i i've seen your um your recent posts on on instagram uh looks like the brewery's coming together my man i'm happy to see that Rijo is a bust yeah yeah i thought it might be like a nice sort of opportunity for him to have a bit of a renaissance but obviously having some ailments also in the forward group didn't help so, hey, but they got middle stat out of it. They had an embarrassment of riches on defense. So that's good. Prost. <laughs> the Kings and Preds to lose as much as possible. Oh, for the Kraken. Hey, back-to-back -back wins for Seattle. I I'm impressed by that, I have to say. Uh, they're not dead yet, but they got to keep it going, you know? This is where you have to win five out of seven, right? Uh, happy trade season. Yeah, yeah. Today's the big day, I guess. Um, Cougars will make March Madness for the first time. Uh, Wazoo? I, I didn't know they were playing well. Certainly makes up for the season they had in football. Uh, pretty big trade with Buffalo and Colorado. Yeah, I mean, for me, that that it completely comes out of nowhere. But I, I understand how that mutually benefits both parties here. And, and, and that's what's right here at the top for me. Acquired defenseman Bowen Byron from the Avalanche in exchange for middle stat. Uh, here's what David Panyota just tweeted here. Some chatter around the Sens. Jacob Chikrin lately, uh, he has one year left on his deal after this season. As Tampa navigates the D market, I, I think Tampa needs Hannafin the most. But when we look at bargaining chips, they are one of the weaker teams. Uh, they'll still try to figure out Hannafin. I believe they've also checked in on Chikrin. Some talk Philly may have to. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, the Flyers are still hanging on to that. Uh, that third spot in their division. Uh, yeah, Wazoo uh, second in the Pac-12. Yeah, not, not the strongest of conferences for basketball, right? But that's fantastic. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, still waiting to see if the Hurricanes actually do something, but they're just not usually a big player at the trade deadline. The Sabres intend to keep Bowen Byram. They see him as an important piece on a blue line already featuring Darlene Power and Matias Samuelson. Yeah, that's a good-looking group there but I mean Buffalo a little bit behind schedule at least a lot of us including myself thought that they would be in the playoffs I know that they've had a better second half but that was the case last year too uh, yeah let, let me know guys if you see any more uh trade uh yeah any more deals out there Canes are gonna miss the window and and that's the thing too like I I see this as a, a strong opportunity for them you know you got prime Ajo Prime Natchez, Svechnikov, you know, he's going to be good for a number of years. But you look at the defense, right? Like Slavin Prime. Burns, still able to contribute playing alongside him. Pesci, right? Isn't Pesci a free agent after this year? So, yeah, I think it's important. But honestly, comparing them to last year, I don't think they're as good. I liked their makeup last year more. Even though Kochetkov this year has been excellent. Uh, they looked good. They need to get rid of that albatross of a contract for Skinner. Yeah, that's not going away anytime soon, though, right? I always liked uh, Henrique. Reminds you of Matt Cullen. The ageless wonder Matt Cullen. I, I don't know how what kind of a season Henrique has had. 
Let's take a look. Uh, Adam Henrique. Whoa, look at that. 18 goals and 24 assists. Um, getting, of course, you know, top six minutes. That's pretty damn good. What's his uh, shot percentage? 16.2. That's pretty typical for him. So, yeah, Henri Henrique has picked it up really nicely this year. Um, actually, last year wasn't as bad as I would have thought either. I thought he would have tailed off by now. But the Oilers, you know, we, we often complain that they don't have enough depth in their lineup. This is a great pick for them. Great pickup, albeit it comes at a good cost. So when we look at, at Stanley Cup windows and we, um, oh, Mean Girls. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to make sure this is also off dark mode. There we go. Yeah, look at the Oilers now. So I believe they haven't, that Cap Friendly hasn't updated this just yet. But they'll be, uh, you know, devoid of a of a um, a first round pick going forward. Hundred and six people. I love I love seeing that. That's fantastic. I have to respect the Avalanche front office for doing their part to get them ready for another Cup run. They were my preseason Stanley Cup pick, even without um, Landis Skog. I, you just can't count them out. I I'm not the biggest fan of how the goaltending has turned out so far. But uh, I mean, who who's the front runner in that conference right now? Is it the Jets really? Canucks? They're not done with with trade deadline deals. Who knows what what do the Jets do? Because Winnipeg has they have bargaining chips in their uh, prospect pool. And look at that, they have two first rounders, just not this year. That was from the uh, Monahan deal. Yeah, God, Monahan fetching a first, right? Need Nachushkin back. Yeah, he's back to practice. That's good. Uh, I, what will the Islanders do, right? That's uh, something we got to have our ear to the ground about because nobody wants third place in that division so far. Uh, Zegras to the Canadiens. What? What? What madness is this? Wait. Okay, that's uh, week C. Uh, I can't see anything here about that. Uh, by the way, uh, since this was something I, I wanted, I wanted to go live immediately. Right when, as soon as all these deals came pouring in, especially Middlestat for for Byram, um, I didn't have a chance to set up the Cortana cam. So let's all say hi to Cortana here. Let's see here. How does she look on camera? There she is. There's Cortana. She's just getting some rest after what was a very intensive. Fetch session. We were playing Frisbee today at the park. Actually, I probably shouldn't say that out loud. She'll bounce right back up and say, let's go again. Um, but yeah, she's doing great. And uh, I guess she's just waiting for the uh, for the Gensel deal to break. It was rumored. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that would be, that would just break the internet. Uh, middle stats a plus 12 this year. Oh. Actually, let's take a look at, at Casey. Casey, Mill yeah, look at that. He's actually built on last year fairly well. 14 goals, 33 assists, averaging over 18 minutes of time on ice. So maybe not quite, well, yeah, just about at the rate that he was at last year. So it's not like the, the Sabres are suffering this year because of him. And uh, yeah, he's 25 years old. I might have seen him at, at Minnesota. I'm, I went to a Minnesota-Michigan game like six years ago. All right. Yeah, I can't bl blame Cat Friendly. Yeah, and of course they want to make sure that, um, like the the deals have been you know reported by the teams on X, right, to make it officially official. So I think that's completely fair. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens broke the uh, Predators' winning streak. I know, and the Preds pulled away about halfway through the third, and you thought that that was going to do it. They were playing at home too, and then. They, the, the Habs just um, hemmed the uh, Preds in their own zone uh, in the overtime period. And Nick Suzuki, that was a fantastic shot. Speaking of fantastic shots, uh, congratulations to the Dallas Stars for uh, coming back from three goals down against my Sharks last night and uh, winning in overtime. By the way, Dallas, man, you want to talk about a team that uh, I, I'm not a huge believer in this year necessarily, but... That team can be scary. Look at look at all these players that they have who are 24 and under. Of course, Haskin in. Uh, you've got Thomas Harley, who's toward the top in goals by defenseman this year. 
Ottinger, he, he's been kind of up and down so far, but I mean, we've seen what he can do when he turns it on, right? And then you have Robertson, 100-point producer. You've got this third line consisting of Wyatt Johnston, who scored a hat trick last night, and the guy who I've been watching the last couple of years in Logan Stankovic, got to see him uh, with Kamloops in person a couple of times. And, uh, of course, in the World Juniors, too, he was beastly. So that team's going to be scary for years to come. Uh, Otter is key for them. I mean, if Otter can give them, it's hard. It's hard with goaltenders, right, to say like, "Hey, can they get consistent go- goaltending?" Because, like, name a goaltender who, for the course of twenty or thirty games, is going to, you know, he's never going to slip below an eight ninety save, save percentage, right? And it is going to be above nine thirty five, maybe a couple times, right? In that middle ground, there aren't that many goaltenders who are going to consistently do that because you know they're going to get bad ba- bounces here and there. You know, the, goaltenders get injured all the time, right? So if Ottinger, though, can can get close to that, whereas, you know, he he wasn't the greatest in those playoffs last year, you know, two years ago against, against Calgary, that was its own thing. Victoria, hey, welcome. Thanks for hopping in here. Uh, but yeah, if, if he looks any bit like he did in the playoffs two years ago or even regular season last year, then that team uh, has to be a one of those few front runners. I'm still not the biggest believer in them right now. Uh, bro, there are too many trades. I know that's that's exactly why I went live. I wanted to make sure that that uh, we could be a good place to keep you guys updated because the NHL network, uh, NHL now doesn't go live until uh, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. So in the meantime, I figure that this is one good way to keep people informed. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Where is that? Canmore. Hmm. Where is that? Is that? That almost looks like it's in uh, Wyoming. Possibly. Could the Kraken look to trade Alex Wenberg? That's a very middle six heavy team. So I I don't think that they could um, rule that out if the uh, asking price is good, right? Uh, Who else we got here? What happens with the Rangers? Yeah. Uh, greetings from Germany. Oh, cool. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, what are the Rangers going to do? Could they get Frank Vetrano back? Yeah, bro, Byron getting traded. I know, like, who who saw that coming? I, I, I can see it now after the fact, but I would not have guessed that. Not for, for them to... <sighs> Middlestats had a good year. He was good last year, too. Is he going to be that true second-line center? Maybe he will be. I don't know. Good Good luck to him, though. Uh, what did the Oilers get? The Oilers, uh, they've received Sam Carrick and also Adam Henrique in exchange for a first rounder and like a fifth rounder. Uh, that was in Banff. Oh, okay. Thanks, Danny. Um, oh, thank you both. Uh, dude, I got to go there. I'm like, a, I don't know, seven and about what, seven and a half hours away by car. Got to go one day. Hopefully when it's not on fire. Bobby Ryan is playing men's hockey again. Oh. Oh, good. I'm happy to hear that. That's good for him. You know, he had, um, to say the the least, he had a very troubling upbringing. And for him to even get to the point that he did in his career from, you know, actually living out his dream as a hockey player, that's incredible. Um, And it's good to see him, you know, sober again. And, and, you know, hopefully uh, he's conquered his his demons once and for all because uh, that sort of thing, you you can't take it. Like, it, it, it can consume a person, right? Why, why would they trade him away? I know, right? It's one of those things where they wanted to address a need and they were willing to part ways with with um, a luxury, right? Something Or something that they already, a surplus, I guess, right? They were able to give up something that they had enough of with defense. I can kind of see it. Uh, the Oilers are having a third team in that trade. Yeah, I saw that too. And I still haven't seen who it's going to be. I would hope it's my Sharks, but I don't know if they could get in on a deal with the Ducks. That involves the ducks like that could happen. Actually, with that being said, have the Oilers announced the deal? Henrique would have been better. Frank. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, you you uh, you've got a couple of options still out there. That's the good thing. But now it's it's really up in the air, right? Do you trade to make a deal like that? 
Are you going to trade? Are, are you going to have to give up the same that the Oilers gave up for Henrik, that first rounder? Or can you stock, can you uh, send a couple of picks, lesser picks, right? Like a second and a fourth, like, like in the Mantha deal. So that's kind of an interesting uh, dichotomy. Is Byram good? I... I really like Byram um, in that Stanley Cup run, both ends of the ice too. And he's he's an excellent skater, excellent skater. So if you want a little bit more speed on defense, he's a good option. Actually, how has, because uh, Byram obviously hasn't played the whole year. Actually, <laughs> he's only missed seven, seven or eight games. Um, eight goals, tw- 12 assists. But again, he's someone who you you can put him on a top pair. I, I see him more as kind of, you know, that second pairing just because he's that's where he's been with Colorado and he's been quite comfortable with that. And I look at, uh, I love looking at this. Uh, five on five, he's splitting his time in the offensive and defensive zone pretty evenly. And goaltenders for the Avalanche, who haven't been all that good this year, goaltenders have a 915 save percentage when he's on the ice. And uh, when you look at shots surrendered versus shots created, it's nothing. Uh, it's nothing uh, uh, to um, be over the moon about. But I mean, I look at, at, at this here. This is good consistency at five on five. He's not going to necessarily be your your first power play quarterback, though. One hundred and forty three people hanging out. This is fantastic. Y'all got to come back for the playoffs. Hey, what's up? What's going on, Thomas? Another uh, German viewer here. Uh, and thank you for sending your uh, guest the jersey pictures. Uh, Byram to Pittsburgh. Well, yeah, the Peng- it's going to be interesting to see if the Penguins can sell off any pieces in addition to Gensel. And, and who knows? That could happen at any moment, right? Uh, the, ter- the update on all the trades that have been made. Yep. Well, uh, if you're looking across the screen here, these are some of the big names that we saw. Tarasenko to the Panthers for picks, right? Uh, Sean Walker to the Avalanche for a first and Ryan Johansson. And the Avalanche also made a deal to get Casey Middlestat from the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for Bowen Byram. That's a big name, right? Bowen Byram was the product of the uh, Matt Duchesne trade, let's not forget. Uh, In addition to Sam Girard. With Kako in the long run. Oh, interesting. Wasn't he playing top line recently? Uh, Leafs are 0-3 so far against the Boston Bruins. That does not bode particularly well, although the playoffs are in you know, a second season. But yeah, that's definitely something to, to uh, keep your eye on because uh, I guess they'll they'll play one more time this year, right? Uh, don't remind you about Kensel. Uh, any news on Hoaglander? Uh, I have not seen anything on Nils Hoaglander. However, I think that we have when we talk about the Canucks, they are interested in Jake Gensel, like the, the big sources out there. I, I can't remember if it's Drager or LeBron or Chris Johnston, but one of them has said that the Canucks are interested in Jake Gensel. And I can't remember if the, if the Canucks themselves have expressed that they would be willing to trade Elias Lindholm, but that's kind of the murmur here. So if they got Gensel, would there be another piece as part of that deal? It would be a blockbuster deal, right? And then you'd have Lindholm and you'd have... Uh, maybe somebody like a Nils Hoaglander is part of that, but I would be surprised if they, I don't think that they're looking to aggressively trade Hoaglander per se, considering they already moved out Kuzmenko. Byram's better than middle stat. I mean, I, I like Byram quite a bit. I do. I haven't watched middle stat all so much. Um, they, all right. Catch you later, Victoria. Uh, the 23 man roster limit goes away Friday too. Does it now? All right. Yeah, yeah. If you guys have more questions, keep them coming for sure. And uh, again, even if there's not like a Gensel deal or something like that right now, now uh, I'll try to go live. Although the rest of this week is a little bit tricky. <laughs> my One of my best friends just texted me. You got to be kidding me. Byram for Middlestat one for one. There we go. Uh, chat? Oh, no, no, that should be fine. Uh, let's see here. Don't you think the Sharks have to deal a UFA? Yeah, I, so, so I just saw that Duclair has appointed a new agent for him because I think he's his own agent, right? Well, 
Yeah, I mean, he was very dejected from that game last night. And, and you know, he had seemed to have expressed interest in staying in San Jose. But, yeah, I, I think the Sharks, they have to get ahead of the pack here and make a deal. There are still teams out there, for example, the New York Rangers, that could use the services of one of those players. And the Sharks being in a good salary cap situation, it's only getting better for them. The Sharks can consume cap, right? They can still absorb some of the salary cap for somebody like Mikhail Granlin. And they got to sell high on him because he's the team's leading scorer. I, I can't say that without chuckling. 168 people. I love it. Uh, oh, what's going on, Himraj? Thanks for hopping in, man. Uh, Oilers uh, active today getting Adam Henrique and St. Carrick from the Ducks. What would it take for Boston to get Lindholm from Vancouver? I know, right? Boston, not the easiest to uh, deal with because they don't have a very rich prospect pool. I don't know if they're willing to part ways with a Fabian Lizelle or someone like that. But look at the Bruins, man. No first this year, no second, no third. Looking at next year, they don't have a second either. And they don't have the deepest prospect pool. So it's going to be tough for them. And um, yeah. That's one of those teams where it's hard for them to get better going forward. Lindholm for Lindholm. Oh, shoot. Speaking of breaking the internet. Uh, hi from Sweden. All right. Thanks for joining. I appreciate that. It's great to see people from all parts of the world here. Byram's good, but we didn't need him as much as a two-center. Yeah, I think that that's a fair assessment. It's hard, it's hard to, to, to accept that, I think, but... I, I, I see the logic here. All right. So uh, let's see here. Any further updates? You guys keep me posted if you see something. Tarasenko, Walker, Henrik, all moved so far. Here's my, my, oh, okay. Just an article. Jordan Eberle. Yeah. I mean, would the Kraken consider dealing one of their forwards, right? They don't have like a superstar at forward on that team. They have, you know, a scoring by committee, right? Except for Jared McCann. I should I should um, amend that statement. Uh, Wild uh, signed Zach Bogosian. A very affordable deal. What's the way for the Sharks and Duclair especially? Like what would be the easiest way for them to do it? Well, they got to find a team that, that has some draft capital. It doesn't have to be anything. Uh, it doesn't not like those guys. They can be dealt for like. If, if we got a second for Grandland and something from the prospect pool or like a second and a fifth or something, I'd be, I'd be happy for that. Uh, but yeah, like I said earlier, offer to consume some of their salary too, right? You see th that the Capitals have traded away Mantha, but they held on to 50% of his salary. Same thing with Tarasenko and the Ottawa Senators. Uh, let's see. Ottawa got fleeced. Yeah. Yeah, they did. I agree with you, Riley. Um, Tuck's getting moved. I know, right? I, I saw uh, one another creator out there predicting that Tuck would go to the Rangers, and I was just like, I I just couldn't like I couldn't stomach seeing him in a, <laughs> in a Rangers jersey with how he's you know a Buffalo or a Western New York native, right? Uh, Canucks are trading away at Lindholm. Yeah, there's speculation that he could be uh, one of the pieces uh, moving out of Vancouver in order for them to get Gensel. Uh, Adam also joining us from Sweden. Wonderful. Well, good. It's not, yeah, it's not too late over there. It's about what, 8.30 at night. Uh, okay, let's see here. How the trades, uh, I'm trying to get to as many of these as I can. I really appreciate your your patience with this. Uh, these are all fantastic questions. How the trades work in the sense of, will Casey not play against Toronto because he is traded or is there a time period you need to come to the other team? That's a really good question because, uh, yeah, now he's going to have, oh, no, 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 he's going to Colorado. Sometimes, as we saw with like Chris Tanev, there can be a waiting period if, for example, someone goes from an American team to a Canadian team. But uh, I've seen players, you know, suit up for their new team as soon as like a day after they've been, um, a day after they've been dealt. If there's any way, if if anybody else has more kind of insight on this, uh, feel free to to tag Dystros and um, elaborate on that. Uh, but yeah, Tuck getting moved. I, I ah, man, I just don't know. That just doesn't. That just doesn't seem right to me. Uh, let's see. Here. Charlie McAvoy got got a shoe deal. Actually, those kicks look pretty fresh from from the uh, image I saw. Uh, let's see. Here. Brandon Duhame. 
I wonder if he would fight Rempe. Uh, Anthony Mantha, not happy about that. Well, I think that just because of their injuries, they need to, needed to make some sort of a move. But I don't think the Golden Knights are done just yet. Let's let's cut to them. Let's cut to the Knights. It's been a tough year for them. So I'm happy to um, show them some uh, some coverage here. All right. So the, the thing with the Knights is that, look at that. They only are missing their second. Look at that. They got all of their first round picks. They've got cap going forward because when you look at their roster, right, next year, they have uh, Jonathan Marshall, so is a free agent. So will Mantha and uh, Chandler Stevenson, who's been fantastic for them. What a steal. Um, yeah, so if they aren't able to, for example, give Stevenson a salary raise, that's okay if they can bring in somebody like a Jake Gensel. Although, of course, Stevenson has been a bargain up until this point. Almost 200 people in here. Let's see if we can get there. That'd be sweet. Uh, by the way, uh, if you could leave a like, that does help attract others like yourselves. Uh, please and thank you. Casey can't play tonight. Oh, okay. So the day that you're dealt, you can't play. Uh, let's see here. Cheers from Brazil. Olmark for Lindholm. One, oh, sorry. Is Adam Larson getting traded? I I would be surprised. By the way, I hope I hope, I'm glad that he's okay. I don't think that he sustained any big injury from from that hit, did he? From those, so he he got hit at the beginning of that game by by uh, 76 on Calgary. I forget his last name, and then and then it was Vince Dunn who got boarded. That that there was a hearing for that. I don't has there been a fine or a suspension for that? I don't know because coming from the same player, right in his first game with the team, crazy. Hannafin to, to Carolina just a rumble. The thing with the Hurricanes is that they have already a very stacked defensive core. So I would think that if anything, they would want a backup goaltender who doesn't get injured or they want to do something, I would think, at the at the worst in their middle six. I th yeah, I thought that Mantha, though, that for that price was a good deal. Uh, Alex Tuck for Keandre Miller would work for you. I mean, th but the Sabres, of course, just getting Bowen Byram, so I can't see that. Uh, yeah, Adam Larson getting traded. I, I haven't heard anything about that. The Stars. Yeah, I was just... So, Adam, I was just talking about, like, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes ago, how amazed I am at, like, this team having so many players, 24 and younger, uh, just looking at Stankoven last night and Johnston scoring the hat trick. And uh, the season that Harley's had, and of course Haskin in, Ottinger in goal, right? So I haven't heard Dallas as like a potential player to get like another forward. Backup goaltender is certainly a position they could look to upgrade, though. Uh, as a Sharks fan, I would gladly barter with you uh, for Kapo Kakinen. Don't let that goals against average fool you. I know the last couple games have been kind of rough on him, but he has actually played fairly well for for the Sharks this year. Uh Oh, okay, okay. So the third, so the third team in that deal for Henrique was actually Tampa. That's very interesting. I, I would not have have thought that. I thought it would have been a, a team like Columbus or somebody with some sa with more salary cap space. But uh, Tampa, I still think that they have to make a move just to get into the playoffs. And, and Noah Hannafin would be toward the top of that. Uh, James Van Riemsdyk, uh, his one thousandth game. Congratulations to him. He was with the Flyers and the Leafs. Yeah, actually, at one point, before I even had this channel, I had a James Van Riemsdyk Maple Leafs shirt. Um, Vegas to Trey Martinez. I could see that, yeah. That that would make sense to me. Again, kind of like another team that defensively, they can plug in anybody and they can excel. They want some more firepower, somebody to help out on the power play more. And that's why I think Jake Gensel could still very well go there. Uh, he just went on IR. Oh, shoot. Okay. Man, uh, let's see your competition for Byron to become top D. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, if I were the, were the uh, Sabers, I would just think that he'd be, you know, kind of plugged in, plugged in as a second pairing defenseman. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a foreign name, but Pospisil. I I don't know. I, I don't want to butcher the name any further. Hennepin to Carolina, just to flip him for Allmark and a. Three or four to Boston. Oh, that's creative. 
Uh, let's see here. Check if Friedman posted anything on the Oilers trade. Da uh, Daily Faceoff said no third team. Oh, huh. That's where. Well, I, I just I have it on screen here with uh, Sarah Valley. So, all right. Or what else am I missing here? Uh, Flurry. I don't think he's going anywhere. I think with Flurry's, how much value can he really add at this point for a team that's trying to to make a deep run? Uh, Sharks are 0-6 wearing the Cali Finn jersey. Yeah, but at least they look really good doing it, so keep wearing it. Uh, let's see here. Tarasenko. Bruins. Oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Duclair with a new free agent. Look at the... <laughs> that, that, that is a trade deadline beard if I've ever seen one. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything else just yet. Here are the uh, players who were placed on waivers today. Poor Anderson Dolan. I I'd almost like to see him somewhere else. From what I've seen, I think that guy could actually be a full-time NHLer um, on a third line. I I I've always liked his game. And he, he did play for uh, the Spokane Chiefs nearby here, too. Pareko's kind of another name that uh, fans are looking out for, uh, like Maple Leafs. I know that they're interested in upgrading their defense. And Pareko's played, um, he's turned things around this year specifically. Look at that. I, I don't really know exactly how these percentages are calculated, but I know fans are much more um, appreciative of his services this year. Look at that, 220 people here. Woo! Hope to see you back for the playoffs and for the other videos that we'll be publishing here. How's Cortana? Ah, oh, she's doing great. Let's, let's cut. We've got 220 people here. I'm, I'm sure a few of you would like to see my puppers. Here, we'll just quickly cut to Cortana for our intermission there she is look at the good girl still snoozing waiting for that jake gensel trade to break all right there we go byron tried to grow a stash it probably still probably still turns out better than, than my little blonde caterpillar here uh word was that duclair could go to the avalanche but since they got casey where would he end up um, yeah, somebody was saying earlier, like, Hey, what, why not, why not, uh, the Rangers take a flyer on him? I, I, I could see that happening. He was, uh, drafted by them, right? Or that was one of his first teams. Uh, okay. Garen's saying that Fleury will not be traded. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, that seems like a fair assessment to me. Uh, thanks Phenom. I do appreciate that. <laughs> Philip Forsberg's mustache to Ottawa. Yeah, that, that's a that's a nice duster. I didn't know the Swedes could could do it like that. Uh, let's see here. Tampa has all that uh, long term injury reserve space. Oh yeah, that's true. Actually, let's take a look at the uh, at the situation here for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I, again, I'm very intrigued because they're like hanging on by a thread to. Um, secure at least a wild card spot. I can't see them moving further up in that in that division at this point. Nah, unless the, unless the Red Wings fall off. But yeah, Tampa, no first or second this year, no first next year. I mean, this team is certainly feeling the effects of the Geno trade. I know I always that's always I beat that like a dead horse, but um it's true. It has not been particularly kind to them. What I said in one of my videos, I was like, why don't they just trade Stamkos? They get so much to help for them uh, in the near future. I mean, they still have, you know, guys like Braden Point and Kucherov should be the MVP this year. It's like they still have great personnel. I know that they'd be trading away a captain, but sell high, man, you know? Uh, but yeah, with cap space right now, they it, it says not zero right now. Oh, excuse me, but that's not factoring in the 8.6 in LTIR right now. So they could still you know, bolster their roster a little bit. Uh, Markstrom is out of trade talks. Interesting. Now, Markstrom, it's tough with him because he has a full no-move clause. So if there isn't an immediate suitor out there, he has one more year left on his deal as well. And, um, can, you know, he's had a nice season. I'm glad to see him bounce back this year. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, we've had lots of coach uh, coaching changes this year in the NHL. Lindy Ruff being the uh, most recent example of that. Uh, it sucks to see that, you know, 
I've like I've always liked Lindy Ruff just uh, as a uh, as a person. I wish he would have found a way to get a Stanley Cup in one of those places that he coached. But uh, yeah, this this Devils season has been a train wreck. Um, they should be back next year, though, stronger. You know, with all the young talent that they have. Stan Coast in the first for Crosby. Hey, whatever happened to uh, Crosby to Colorado to play with McKinnon? I would need a new pair of pants if, if that ever happened. Uh, let's see. Your Tampa Bay blue line is not good enough. Yeah. And I mean, shoot. For anybody who's a Lightning fan, I mean, what has happened to Andre Vasilevsky? I know injuries have not been kind to him this season in particular, but... Um, Rocking an 896, a 2.98 goals against average in 39 games. And what is that? Uh, minus 7.6 goals saved above expected. That does not translate into uh, a deep playoff run, but the playoffs are a new time of year. Uh, Stan Coast to the Canucks. Ooh, that'd be, that would be something else. Woo. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Uh, if they get Landeskog back, is there any possibility that he could return for the playoffs? I, I can't remember, honestly. Nachushkin's the key. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's hard to um, it's hard to uh, remember for for you to like immediately recall that like Nachushkin is is quite valuable to this team for what he can do. Uh, his his offense has only gotten better as he's gotten to the abs, and his defense is is excellent, right? So, um, but I I do agree. You know, he does a lot of kind of behind the scenes stuff, I, I suppose, that you, you know, our eyes are fixated on what McKinnon does and what Rontanen does. And of course, uh, from the blue line side of things, Kale McCarr. All right. Well, anyway, yeah, these are fantastic questions and comments, guys. Keep them coming. I love it. Uh, he's skating with the team. <gasps> oh, all right. Well, that's that's wonderful. Uh, if Crosby leaves before he retires, just stop watching hockey forever. Yeah, don't forget, Crosby's a free agent at the end of next year. So that's going to be the talk of the town for a team that, uh, yeah, Pittsburgh, you know, the Carlson deal actually worked out fairly well for them, but they, they've got quite a lot going uh, in, in the offseason to, uh, to retool themselves and get back in, into somewhat, somewhat of contention, unless they need to actually tear things down, which... Newsflash, Kyle Dubas. That's what you need to do. Uh, yeah, I would probably say that that's his best bet. That's his best bet, Thomas. Uh, I'm just making sure that there are... Uh, what moves do you see happening for the Kings? Yeah. More consistency in goal would certainly help them. It's one of those things where I think for the Kings, if you can upgrade on defense, actually, shoot, could they get could they get Hannafin? Could the Kings get Hannafin? I know they have a couple of younger defensemen who I'm not as familiar with, uh, like Jordan Spence. They're missing their second, their third this year as well, but they have all three first rounders. So could Noah Hannafin be a fit over there? They don't have any salary cap space at this moment. So they would need, I mean, this is one where you could actually possibly involve a third team. And then contractually, I mean, would this be a rental for Hannafin? Is he bullish on getting an extension? That's certainly a factor as well. But, um, yeah, they don't have a whole lot committed to their defense right now. I mean, I could see that maybe working out. I'd, I'd put them in the sweepstakes personally. But the thing is, is that they might have to pay a little bit more because it would be an in-division trade, right? So that would be a big factor uh, going forward. But yeah, I haven't heard the, the Kings being connected to to um, any of these big names like, like Gensel, all right, let's see what else we got here. Any uh, any other big trades going down? I just want to make sure that we're we're covering all our bases here. Here, I mean, this is fun to entertain here. So if if Landis Scott comes back for the Avalanche, 
Duran McKinnon, Rontanen, Landeskog, Middlestad, and Shushkin. Now that's starting to look a lot more for- formidable, right? And then Lekkonen can drop to the third line. Colton and uh, Zach Parisi. Oh, yeah, I forgot he was on their team. And then, uh, again, like when you have Logan O'Connor playing fourth line, you know that you have a, a deep group. And even so, I mean, the, the defense looks pretty solid. But um, Manson's kind of fallen off a little bit, right, since, since that great year he had for them uh, two years ago. Anyway. Fun time of year. Yes, absolutely. Will Eisenman stand pat? There we go. Yeah, that's a good team to talk about, right? Because this time last year, the Red Wings sold off pieces, right? Whereas, of course, in, the, in this offseason, they were very aggressive. And then they, of course, signed Patrick Kane. What do they need to do? What would you do if you're the Red Wings? Do you add a little bit more, a little bit more to your defense, I would think? Someone with uh, some good mobility back there. Could they get in on the Hannafin deal? Could they find themselves a, a stronger goaltender? It's looking less and less likely that the Predators are going to trade Soros, though. And, and even Trot said it himself. So that's the thing. It, it's If Markstrom's not going to be dealt either, you know, Hellebuck was signed at the, at the start of the season. Like, goaltending is going to be very precious um, leading up to, to Friday afternoon. Habs? Uh, I'm not sure. Someone was saying that there was a rumor that uh, that Zegers could be a, a trade target over there. Uh, nice win that they had last night. But uh, I don't follow Montreal to really give you a sincere thought on that, to be frank. But who could they deal away? Let's take a look at that, right? The Islanders? Yeah. Yeah, Wallstrom. I, I, yeah, it was it was funny that you br- that you bring that up. Um, and we'll look at the Canadians too. But on the subject of Wallstrom, I I was just randomly it popped up in my mind yesterday. I'm like, wait, does Oliver Wallstrom still play on the team? And I like like asked my phone. I'm like, how many goals does he have? And he has two. Uh, so yeah, they they still it's the Islander, Islanders, right? They always need more. In this case, it even strikes because what their their power play did get better this year. I think um, having Dobson toward the top of uh, scoring among defensemen absolutely helps with that. So yeah, I, I think that that would be a good fit for them. Center wise, they they look pretty strong down the middle. So how about the services of Anthony Duclair? I'll I'll gladly offer that up to you. But uh, we have to, we have we have to of course look at their uh, situation. Uh, Wallstrom, I mean, like my team. My, my Sharks, could they take him as a reclamation project? Sure, right? Very low cost for us. Uh, but yeah, for the Habs, they have tons of draft picks, which is great for them. So could they maybe deepen their prospect? Could they, I don't know, get a goaltending prospect, for example? Uh, but in terms of guys that they could deal away, the problem for them is that they do have a lot of players signed beyond next year. Uh, Pearson. They might have to still consume some of his salary if they want to deal him away, I would think. Armia, that would be a bit of a steep cap hit, I think, for you know someone who's really out there to like kill penalties. Um, I wouldn't rule it out entirely, though. But like Anderson, I, yeah, that's that he's not going anywhere. Um, I really liked what I saw from Newhook earlier this year. As for one of these guys down here, I, I, I'm not as well versed in their skill sets to really weigh in on that. Uh, defensively, again, I think, I think Matheson's probably signed a little bit too long to deal him away. Could they maybe ship out like a David Savard? I think that's possible too, but yeah, if, if anything, it's going to be a pretty minor move for the Canadians and that's okay. Cause they've done a nice job with again, stockpiling draft picks for the future and Slavkovsky's really turned it on. Uh, I think he probably watched one of my videos and, and decided to get his button gear and I'm happy to see that really. Uh, all right, here we go. Blues standing pat. Yeah, with the Blues, that's a team that they're right on that cusp, right? Right now, they're actually out of a playoff spot, so they don't want to get aggressive to make any moves uh, to to lose some of their draft capital, to lose a prospect. They just hope that they can make the playoffs with what they have right now, right? Um, And, you know, with somebody like Jake Neighbors maturing and developing with them, you know, we're getting into the prime years of Thomas and Cairo. Who knows? Maybe they have 
a a even better season that they can build on next year. Uh, I'm actually kind of impressed that they've you know been able to go this far already. Uh, but Buchnevich, don't forget Pavel Buchnevich. I I haven't heard his name mentioned as much recently, but he was toward the top of trade boards out there as well. So that's another big name that I don't want to leave out. Uh, let's see. Could Swayman be a guy that teams? Oh, I don't think Swayman. I don't think they're willing to part with Swayman so much because. Olmark hasn't been quite at the top of his game this year. And so I, I would think that they want Swayman to be their like their franchise goaltender going forward as much as they could, you know, use draft picks. So Swayman's an RFA at the end of this year. I think I I can't I can't see him getting dealt. All the I mean there are teams out there that need goaltending though. So like if somebody wanted Swayman. They would have to, to to basically deal away the kitchen sink to the Bruins. I think it's more likely that the Bruins would uh, be able to get like a second line center. That's yeah. Having a number one like that is a precious commodity, though. Uh, the Blues are kind of in a tough spot. Yeah. And I mean, the Predators, there's still enough time in the season for them to perhaps fall off. You know, if they were able to, to trade one of their forwards away. Right. Or, or like a Jeremy Lauzon or a, an Alex Carrier on defense. Right or a Tyson Berry and they could drop off a little bit, but um, yeah, I think that the way that they're rolling right now, they just want to see how things kind of play out unless somebody's willing to really offer a lot, then they can actually get more aggressive with selling Byron from, yeah, I know exactly. Right. That's exactly why I decided to go live. I said, wait, 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 what's going on now? Now anything could happen, right? Swam is the man. Yeah. I think that's how it looks too. What a great game last night between them and the uh, Oilers, both, both games. Both games uh, between the Oilers and uh, Bruins were fantastic. What? Do, okay, I think I've gotten as much in here as I can. Um, Olmark or Allen? Yeah, I think I, I should have looked at that earlier. I think Allen would be probably the easier between the two. But I think Boston would not, at this point, they wouldn't rule out trading Olmark because he's at what? Olmark has how much left on his on his deal? Yeah, he's five million through next year. Yeah, he's dropped off a bit this year, but that's not the worst cap hit. But he does have a modified no trade clause, so that's going to be a little bit difficult. When we look at Jake Allen, I would even if he does have trade restrictions, I think he'd be more receptive to um, you know getting dealt somewhere where he can be a backup and maybe com uh, compete for a, tr uh, a Stanley Cup. Uh, seven team no trade list. Okay, that's not too bad. And next year he's under four million. And that's a three-team no-trade list. So I, I think that that's more realistic. Although, of course, the return wouldn't be as heavy as it would be for, for Linus Olmark. Uh, let's see here. Anybody else uh, seeing any deals out there? Still got 240 people here. That's fantastic. I, I do appreciate you guys uh, checking in with me here. We're going to be covering... The playoffs, especially, we do a lot of live streaming around that. Um, also, on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, we are going to have a tankathon stream because the Blackhawks are taking on the Sharks. So, if you want to uh, react to the uh, shit stravaganza with me here on YouTube, uh, I, I cordially invite you to be a part of that. So, I had a lot of fun making the thumbnail for that. Uh, talked about Avalanche in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one that really does jump out at me is is the one for one with Buffalo, but the Avalanche are a team that um, you know they they have already a lot of defensive talent, and uh, Walker's had a, a very strong year, and for them to um, give up a first, I think that's a nice deal for for Philadelphia specifically. But um, yeah, I, I don't think that they're you know the Abs aren't aren't breaking the bank on these trades so far necessarily. I, I think that Bowen Byron was a great player, but. I mean, if, if they can do this to help themselves from like a, a financial standpoint, right, then this could even set them up from one other deal that hasn't come in just yet. So all in all, I think that, that it really works out nicely for the Flyers, but the Avs weren't shooting themselves in the foot either. Yeah, Sackick doesn't mess around. Uh, nice hat. Yeah, thank you. Um, we'll have some uh, some new merchandise to uh, debut pretty soon here too. Uh, a new A new look, a look that you're not as familiar with. Walker third liner. Uh, well, which which Walker are we talking about? Uh, Toffoli. I haven't heard Toffoli. Although, wouldn't that make sense? Because Toffoli, 
he's been uh he's basically the poster boy of trades right because he's gone from everywhere from like you know of course starting in la went to vancouver then immediately goes over to montreal helps him get to the final by the way and then he goes to what calgary and he's their leading scorer and then immediately he gets shipped to jersey Tyler Toffoli, what is his contract situation? Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, my my one claim to fame here on this channel is that I actually grew up with his wife. Uh, she lived on the same street as me. Cat's a cool gal. Um, let's see here. Uh, ba ba ba. So, wait, what? Why am I looking at? Oh yeah, for uh, for Toffoli's deal. Toffoli, look at that, four point two five million. Right. I would think with with uh, the Devils, they would want. I mean, ideally, they would get somebody in goal, right? But the Devils don't necessarily have to get a, like a, a prospect in return if they can make up for the uh, missing second rounder by trading to Foley and maybe getting something else too as part of that deal. Hey, that's good. I I don't think it would be bad for them to to move him out. They have plenty of talent. Although some, you know, I've heard Alexander Holtz's name mentioned as you know, somebody else that they could deal away, uh, given how much talent they have at that position as well. To fully back to LA, even as a Sharks fan, that just seems right to me, honestly. Uh, your birthday's tomorrow. All right, cool. Well, happy early birthday, Dean. Hopefully Vegas can come through and get a win. And who knows, maybe maybe your birthday pre present will be Jay Gensel. Uh, C-Mac is the GM now. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Chris McFarlane. But yeah, you know that Sackick is certainly uh, probably just as active in calling those shots. Uh, let's see here. Ryan Johansson. Yeah, yeah. I, again, I like that deal for the Flyers. What's their draft? Look at that. So they have... Okay, yeah, that's a first for next year. Okay. And then look at that. They, they make their first round selections and then... Eventually, Matvey Michkov comes into the, into the lineup, and uh, who knows what's what's going to happen with uh, from there. Jack, I, I think Jack I's name is uh, I think his parents are Czech, right? All right, I need to quickly use the restroom because I had some caffeine before I did this, so it's going to be a BRB. But here, I'll make a deal with you. I will. Turn things over to Cortana. So can you keep an eye on her for me? Oh, shoot. Actually, I forgot. Ah. I forgot, actually, I'm using a much shorter extension cord that plugs into my laptop. So I'm going to have to do something quite a little bit different. But for those of you who haven't watched this video just yet, make sure to check it out. I'll be right back. <sighs> 1980s hockey scores often higher than baseball games, Cooper Alls and Jofa buckets, and penalty boxes more crowded than a press conference after a Maple Leafs first round exit. And holy Mackinac, the rivalries. The Battle of New York, the Battle of Alberta, Oilers versus Kings, Rangers versus Flyers, North Stars and Blackhawks. These were just some of the tremendous clashes that fans could expect year after year. But there was one rivalry that instantly cut the deepest division between not only fan bases, but an entire province. And I'm not talking about you, Alberta. I'm talking about Quebec, which from 1979 to 95 was home to two NHL teams, the Montreal Canadiens and the Quebec Nordiques. To Quebecers, these teams embody totally different views about how their province should be governed. So every goal, every controversy, and every fight reached a level of shock and vitriol and excitement that specifically from 1982 to 87, maybe no other rivalry can match. The Battle of Quebec pitted the bombastic coach against the remnant of a dynasty. The Canadiens Molson versus the Nordiques Carling O'Keefe. Mark Hunter versus Dale Hunter, the city versus the village. Those were the most savage games I ever played in, said the Canadiens Mario Tremblay. After some of them, I felt like I needed a wheelchair. All right, there we go. Okay, we still have plenty of people hanging out. So yeah, that was one of the recent, well, it was like three weeks ago, but one of the more recent videos that I produced on the channel here. I actually have a feature going on or that I'm working on right now about uh, the Hartford Whalers. So hopefully by, I don't know, about uh, next Thursday or Friday, we'll have that to enjoy. 
Uh, does Cabo Caco go to Anaheim for Vetrano? I, yeah, I wouldn't rule out um, Vetrano as possibly returning back to the Rangers. I mean, you could see someone like him come back there. You could see Duclair come back, I would think. Did uh, Joel Edmondson get traded? Uh, I haven't heard anything about that, actually. Uh, how's Idaho? Oh, it's beautiful. We actually have blue sky. I sometimes forget what that looks like this time of year. Uh, all right, let's see. Okay. Oh, Jack Eye's parents are from Kosovo. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, not too well uh, versed on uh, Slavic languages, but uh, ooh, there's the card on Casey Middlestat here. I'll, let's go back to the feed here and see if there are any, there's any further news. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, and they might not be done yet either. That's a really cool shirt. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, I didn't hear anything on Edmondson. Of course, Ryan Johansson is now a flyer. Simone Nemitz was recently scratched. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Oops. Yeah, let me know, guys, if... Uh, hey, Spokane won last night. Uh, let's see. Yeah, come on, Carolina. Do something, Don Waddell. This is the uh, the full conditions of the uh, Henry trade, by the way. Um, will Duclair finally get traded? He definitely bumped his value in the last few games. That's true. The thing, though, is that I hear that the Sharks aren't really drawing much interest for anybody, which is um, a little bit alarming, honestly. I don't know if that's because Mike Greer is asking for too much in return. But yeah, he's got to get something done because the Sharks are missing, what, their third this year, I believe. And they have some other depth picks that they need to account for as well. Uh, Flyers are expected to release uh, Ryan Johansson per Frank Saravalli. Thank Frank. Learn to spell, Nick. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, so Johansson cleared waivers from Philadelphia. For some reason, I was like, did he clear from the avalanche so that's what's up okay thank you for clarifying that for me i appreciate the uh, the updates here uh z chris needs to go to philly man what a weird deal that was uh between gautier and uh drysdale but i think drysdale's worked out well so far um let's see what else we have here I don't, oh, here we go. I don't see Granlund, Cunnan, and Ruta at practice. Okay, so that, my friends, might be something. I know the Sharks, of course, have their ailments. Uh, Jason Zucker, by the way, was held out for trade restrictions or for trade-related reasons. So Mikhail Granlund, who leads the Sharks in scoring, could possibly be on the move. Uh, Luke Cunnan was drawing interest, I know, from the Oilers, although they, of course, make, made that deal today for Henrique. And also, uh, two-time Stanley Cup winning defenseman Jan Ruta. I'm surprised to hear about that, but I wonder if those guys will be bundled together. Now, my, my question with the Sharks, though, is that even if they made deals for these players or possibly released someone like Cunning or released, well, they wouldn't release Ruta. Um, they could make a, could release a player, though, in order to, for example, take on a bad contract and get better draft capital in return. But I'm still keen to see if uh, there's any interest in Kapo Kakinen for what is now a thin goaltending market. Uh, where does Wenberg go? Well, again, like the Rangers are another team, right? Well, like we were talking about that before with like Vetrano or even Duclair. Like I guess I could kind of see them looking into players like that, like Wenberg as well. Um, that's kind of the first that I think of. Uh, let's see here. Also, who else would be a good spot for Wenberg? It would have been interesting to see him go back to Florida, but now they, they basically just got Tarasenko to, to fill that void. I mean, they're, I don't even know if you would call that a void, given how complete the Panthers have been. Uh, you know, one, yeah, one team that I don't want to forget here, uh, and this is the team that, for anybody who doesn't know, this is my favorite team in the Eastern Conference. It's the Hurricanes. The Canes have draft capital. The Canes have a fairly decent, like, they got a middle-of-the-road prospect pool at the worst. 
would they consider dealing one of these players? Uh, Shea? Shea's going to get a good payday in the offseason. They might want to sell high on him. Pesci, of course, has always been, you know, there's been trade talks about him for quite some time. Chatfield, that's kind of like, if you keep these other guys, Chatfield's kind of like the uh, the, the, the lesser Bowen Byram for the Avalanche in the sense that I think that he is at least a good third pairing defenseman. I think he's maybe even better than that. So yeah, I could see them maybe moving out a contract like that in order to, to get some more um, scoring up front, honestly. This is still largely a team that scores by committee. Or the Hurricanes could, you know, use a, a reliable backup goaltender. Uh, anyway, that, that was just kind of a, a, a tra I thought, can I even talk right now? Uh, a train of thought there. Uh, as a Shark fan, would you rather the Penguins get the first rounder or would you rather hope the pick slides to 2025 and becomes unprotected? You know, Jeffrey, I have not even reached a final decision on that thought that's been swirling around in my mind uh, over the past couple of weeks. I don't know which one I want right now. Um, my, my buddy was telling me though, that there's good, there are good defensemen available up until about 15 in the draft. So I would be cool with that because the sharks really do need to bolster their uh, prospects at that position. So I'm cool with that this year, honestly, but I wouldn't complain either way. Uh, the sharks though, I don't know. If there was like a stud number one defense. Well, I, I, what I'm trying to say is they need multiple defensemen in their prospect pool through the draft in those first two rounds. So I, I'd say let's just draft this year. Let's not get let's not get cute with it. I guess. Wenberg to uh, New York, really? Did I just call that? Did Mahir just join us on the stream too? What's up, Mahir? How you doing, man? Yeah, there we go. I just called it, kind of. Wenberg to the Rangers. Wenberg to the Rangers. Let me update my banner here. Uh, let's see here. Alex Wenberg to the Rangers. All right, good. Good for the Rangers. I think that having some middle six scoring there uh, does kind of fill a need for them. Awesome. Now the question with the Rangers, though, because I know Shesterkin's been turning it on recently, but I know that they'll they'll start the playoffs with Shesterkin, of course. But like, would Quick get a get a shot if uh, if they get down two nothing series or something like that? Uh, amazing prospects, uh, amazing of the Golden Knights. Cortana is going to need um, Cortana is going to need her own personal dog park and. Uh, like she needs her own, uh, belly rubber, like full-time belly rubber. Like she, she needs, she needs the world and, uh, the best pet insurance policy there is the penguins. Boy, let's take a look at them. I mean, cause here was a team that obviously loaded up in the off season. And, uh, although Carlson's played well for them, the team as a whole has just, you know, no, nobody in that Metro Want, wants to get into the playoffs after the Hurricanes and Rangers. Um, so yeah, Carter, the Penguins would have to consume consume some of that salary, at least fifty per, like fifty percent of that, I would think, if they want to move him out uh, and get something in return. And what would that even be, like a fourth rounder? Um, but yeah, if they want something su substantial to help their prospect pool, P.O. Joseph. Would they be willing to part ways with him if if they got a first from that? Maybe. I know that they that from a prospect standpoint, they want someone who's like ready right now to play in the NHL just about, right? Nadelkovich, sell high on him. He's had a really good season for them. But yeah, Jay Gensel is obviously the marquee name here. I just don't know who is their best attractive offer after that. Joseph is not a name that I've heard in, in trade talks, but it would not be hard to deal with deal him considering he's at a very affordable cap hit. But I don't know, man. Yeah, I'd say probably Nadelkovich would probably be the next name I look at. Sell high on him. You know, be bullish on that. Uh, Washington, how much do they get back for, for Pacioretty? Has he been dealt? Mm -hmm. 
Nick Stradamus. Thank you, uh, Dice Stradamus. I appreciate that. Uh, every time I always hear Nostradamus, uh, I hear, I think of Dave Chappelle, the Ch Chappelle show, if, if anybody, uh, first of all, is old enough to remember those sketches. Um, here's Wenberg going to the Rangers, of course. Sealer has been extended. Oh, okay. Well, that's uh, nice news for the Flyers fans in exchange, or, you know, getting rid of Walker, but also getting a first rounder in return. Uh, Buchnevich. Yeah, yeah. Let's not forget about him. Need to bite the bullet and trade Crosby for a haul. They won't do it. Yeah, exactly. Dubas was not the guy to hire if he wanted to uh, make that trade. Avoid a 10, 8 to 10 year rebuild. Yeah, I mean, it sucks because it's like you want you want him to be able to uh, be the leader of that team for for another Stanley Cup run. But to to give them what they need to actually have a complete team for that. I'd like to if, if Crosby went to the avalanche, though, that would be incredible. All right. So has uh, Patch already been dealt or is that, was that just a question? Patch already it's for him to get a, to fetch a second. It almost seems like that would almost be too aggressive, just given that the guys always hurt. Oh, Sealer's on IR right now, too, huh? Interesting. So then what are the Flyers planning to do in terms of making the playoffs? I guess they just want to roll the dice with what they have. And if they, it, it, well, for them, they, they were playing with house money this whole year anyway, right? Still 258 people. Wow. You are now officially the second biggest crowd that we've ever had live concurrently. So stick taps to you. Thank you so much. And don't forget, guys, we're going to be streaming throughout the playoffs. Uh, I actually do live play-by-play -play audio. So if you don't want to be paying for all of those crazy platforms, right, I will give you some, some audio at the very least and plenty of gold treats for my dog too. Uh, Nick, what's going on, man? Uh, our teams are not particularly busy so far. Um, Canucks Chances says, Alo. I mean, th this is a great, fairly complete team. Uh, and thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't think they're done just yet, though, because apparently they're interested in Gensel and they may be willing to part ways with Lindholm to make it work, which is unbelievable. But uh, as long, you know, Demko playing the way he's been playing, Quinn, like they have elite talent at all the major positions. So I think that that certainly does give them a chance. There's no one team. It's not like the East where I think that Florida is. I think that Florida is the team to beat in the East not just because of last year, but just because of how that team's built, right? How complete they are. So I'd still say that there's a gap between them. Maybe you could say maybe the Rangers or maybe the Bruins underneath them, right? And then you have some like the, like the Hurricanes and then the other teams or, or something to that extent. Whereas in the West, I think it's a little bit more horizontal, right? I think that you have a fairly complete Jets team. You have the Canucks on that tier. Some people might put the Oilers on that tier personally. I don't quite just yet. You could argue the Golden Knights if they're healthy. You could certainly say the Avalanche. But yeah, I think that the West is more wide open. And so why not the Canucks when they're elite at every position? I still think that their depth is still fairly good. But I don't think that they should be done making moves necessarily just yet. Dan, what's going on? What have you missed? Uh, check Dicker, man. Um, Red Wings, though, no, no moves to report on for them. Uh, finals prediction, Rangers and Canucks. Oh, a 94 rematch. Actually, a lot of our viewers want to see that happen. That or a 2011 rematch between the Bruins and them. Dude, Jaws gifting out five memberships. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome to our new members and thank you, Jaws. And when you, when you folks do that, uh, we get members, new members come in, they get extra content. We have members, live streams and videos there. And of course your contributions like that actually do you know, some of that gets kicked back to my channel uh, for uh, as a monetary contribution. So thank you so much, uh, Jaws, friend of the channel and big diehard Panthers fan. So if for all things Panthers, and I mean, we're going to have our eye on this team for the next few months. Guys, if you haven't already, do subscribe to Flying Fluffy Hockey. My guy Jaws does a fantastic job. And uh, we may be uh, having, we might have a, a joint project. Well, not really a joint project, but uh, a joint stream to uh to enjoy in about a month's time 
So anyway, I really appreciate that, my friend. Uh, for some reason, I cannot tag you in a post right now or in a uh, chat message. All right. Well, that's that's groovy, man. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? The Blackhawks trade happened in the 11th hour. Yeah. Basically, as teams scrape the bottom of the barrel, they might try to pick up somebody from Chicago or from San Jose. Yeah, right now, if the Panthers or if, we, if the playoffs started today, we get that old Florida in the first round, at least if we're going off of points percentage, right? Patrick is, is sponsored by Brand Aid Band. Um, but yeah, let's see. Do we have any? Okay, so Sealer, four years, 2.7. That seems like a steal. That's a great deal. And that team's already, you know, getting into a better shape financially. They could somehow get uh, Ristolainen off the books. That'd be nice, right? Uh, Paul Martin's 43rd birthday. Uh, helped get the uh, Sharks to the Stanley Cup that year. Uh, there'll be a, a line change for the broadcasting. Hedekin will replace an under the weather drew. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, that's just temporary. Hire me, guys. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Hurricanes did sign Max Comtois. It's so weird that the Ducks didn't sign him. I mean, he's led the team in scoring before. But then again, they got Andre Kasha, and I forgot that you know, he was even on the team at one point. What's this? Every player they have. Oh, for for the Blues, no trade clause. Yeah. Hard to move out the defenseman on that team. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Elias Lindholm has just four goals and two assists in his 14 games. I didn't know that. Didn't he score two goals in his first game? He had, he had at least a goal because we were live during that. But yeah, I don't know if we're going to see any more moves just yet. Maybe what I need to do is get back to my video production. And then if another big move happens, then I'll, I'll hop on. Uh, Friedman on TJMS says when that Vancouver Carolina discussion happened. Oh, okay. Okay. Asked about Alexander Nikishin. Hmm. It's funny. I actually worked with somebody with a name almost identical to that. Uh, let's see here. I don't see any more murmurs, though. Let me know, guys, if you see anything different. All right, Bucinevich back to the Rangers. That'd be nuts, wouldn't it? But since they got Wenberg, I don't see them adding another winger. Uh, well, then again, Wenberg plays. Doesn't he play both positions? I think he does. Uh, let's see here. Let's get a beer soon. Hey, man, sounds good. I got to I gotta hit you up, man. I, I, I literally thought like a week ago, I was like, I'm like, oh, crap. I haven't seen Danny in a while. I haven't been in Spokane as much. I'm going to the Chiefs game on Saturday um, with a meetup group. But uh, anyway, I'll get in touch with you soon, dude. That'd be awesome. Uh, Hannafin to L.A. Wait, 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 wait. What? I, I did mention earlier that, that they should be a player in that, in that sweepstakes. I think Tampa is has the biggest need for him. But I could see Hannafin going there because L.A. has all their first rounders uh, for the next three years. Uh, Dan, what's going on? Um, no, Detroit hasn't done anything just yet. But hey, at least it's not like the last eight years where they've been selling, right? Sealer extended, great deal. Only two point seven million for four years. I think that's great. Yeah, 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 for sure. And Stall. Oh uh, yeah, Mark Stall. Mark Stall. Yeah, <laughs> got to make sure I have the right Stall. Um, let's see here. Tyler Johnson, Spokane native Tyler Johnson, uh, Colin Blackwell. I, I don't know how he's done on that team. I liked him a lot in Seattle. He played really well for them. Uh, Donato, Donato is kind of a good mercenary again, but there are some other wingers, you know, middle six wingers, third line wingers who are, I think, more, you know, just better bets for teams than Donato. But yeah, if you need a bargain, right, where you, you know, trade away off like a fifth rounder or something, then he's not a bad, he's not a bad pickup. You're, you're not going to get a lot of defense, though, from him. Who are the Canes getting, says Tommy? I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering the same thing, man. I haven't heard their names uh, beyond anything but uh, what could have been a trade with the Canucks for Elias Pettersson. But that, you know, of course, that's not happening with now Pettersson being extended. Uh, all the talk around L.A. is either Hannafin or Tuffy. Heard that last night. Yeah, yeah. Um, were you the one earlier who, who said 
to Foley back to LA. I'm like, makes makes a lot of sense, right? He's a very affordable, a very affordable player. And if you really have to get aggressive and trade a first, the Kings have him. Or they've they've got those three. Hennepin to LA makes sense. Kings won't do too much. And that was the thing. I like they should have been big players last year. They should have been aggressive in going for Bo, like Bo Horvat would have been perfect for them, right? Their power play has been good this year, but last year it wasn't as much. And they need someone who could play in front of the net like that. I, they did pick up Bunting to, to play on the wing. He's done fine, but like Horvat w- w- is a much bigger difference maker. I would have loved to see him on that team. Uh, Couture's groin injury might be career ending. Oh, God. I didn't think it would be that bad. I thought he would. I, I had a feeling he would miss the whole year, basically. That's that's hard to come to terms with. It really is. Um, but I'm I'm not at that thought just yet. Any updates on Gensel? At least from my feed here on X, I don't have anything just at this time. Look at that. You, that's that's two point seven million dollars for five years. I thought it was four years. Well, even so, that's that's pretty damn good. That's very affordable. I know he's thirty years old, but defensemen can still hold their own pretty strong at that age. Kane's biggest move right now is getting rid of D'Angelo. Yeah, what's what's why the hell did they bring him back? They have enough productivity from, uh, you know, especially Shea with the way he's panned out the last couple of years, and um, you know, Burnsy and even Slavin can chip in once in a while too. Uh, you know, the guy who I liked for them was Gostas Bear. I know that he was more expensive to to keep around, but man, he he had a nice career revival with them and, and the Coyotes too. Uh, Some Calgary Mackenzie Weger Manjapani did is Mac, is Manjapani long term? Okay, so Mackenzie. Oh, you're like you're going straight up blockbuster on this. Okay, Mackenzie Weger with Andrew Manjapani from Drake Batherson, Jacob Chikorin, Zach McEwen. Wait. I think I think you uh, you brought this up one one time, right? On on another stream to Ottawa. I think if Ottawa's really bullish on being a playoff team next year, then I like Batherson though. I frankly would rather have Batherson than Manjapani. I I like that for the Flames personally. And a second rounder as part of that going to Calgary. Like, yeah, the Flames, I think they would make out like bandits for that. But I don't I don't know off the top of my head how long ter- how those contracts are structured. Winterberg would be um oh you 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 still want to see them upgrade at wing. So so he would play center. Okay. I always get so confused with with the Rangers, like what they do with like well, Heedle, I know he's out for the for the year, but like you know how how they you know fit their 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 wingers versus their centers. It always kind of throws me off. Uh, by the way, nice uh, picture. That's uh, one of my favorite albums of all time. Master of Puppets isn't even my favorite song on there. Uh, let's see here. Pedersen's deal was good. Yes, yes, I I completely agree. I thought that was a great contract. Not like a huge steal right now, but it, it could be. I think that was a, an awesome deal though for the, for the Canucks. So big, big kudos to uh, Patrick Alvin for that. <laughs> Are the teams forced to do something or can they skip the deadline? Oh yeah. There's no, um, yeah, there's, there, there isn't anything mandatory about this at all. So yeah, there will be some teams that don't trade anybody or they might like wave a player and that's about it. So it can be very much a, a mellow uh, deadline for some teams that are just kind of stuck in the middle, right? LA put two players on waivers today. Yeah, they, didn't they waive um, Anderson Dolan? I'd like, again, I'd like to see him as a as a third liner or maybe a fourth liner on, on another team like full-time. Uh, carries a full no-trade clause. Over the first two years, plus a $1.5 million signing bonus. Okay. 
I still think that that's a, a, a at the worst, it's a fair deal for the Flyers to sign. Uh, had the Rangers gotten Wenberg? Yes, that is confirmed by the main sources. The Minnesota Mild has no direction. Yeah, that's a tough team to to be cheering for right now because you know you had just a couple of years ago a, a top three prospect pool, but the injuries this year have been atrocious for them. For one, and two, they got to play out next year. Uh, for those Parisi and Suter buyouts to come off the books. That's what's very frustrating for them. But hey, Marco Rossi finally looking like, uh, you know, showing us promising signs that he'll be uh, a core piece of that franchise going forward. And Brock Faber has been great for them too. So that's good. Uh, do I think Tarasenko slots into the second line? Man, I mean, that would be a great, uh, Dominique, that would be a great question for Flying Fluffy Hockey, uh, since he's a, a diehard Panthers fan. I don't even think there's a word that we can use for him. Uh, diehard is almost too too light of a term. Um, I'd like to see Tarasenko. I don't know, man. I, I, I With Bennett and Kachuk. I, I just love the way that the Florida Panthers roll uh, at least their first three lines. So I, I would see him maybe as a third liner at this point. Don't, don't uh, compromise somebody else's role if they've been performing really well, you know? Damn, dude, they're, they're so stacked. Uh, Mikheyev, Atu, Ratu. Oh, yeah, they have Ratu now. That's right. And a first in Lekromaki or Pet would be good. Whoa, that's that's a lot. Yeah, that would have to be a sign in trade. And even so, that they might be coughing up a, a little bit too much there. But yeah, the Penguins, well, they could use a lot of that, right? Mikheyev with... Oh yeah, McKay would also be a cab dump. So so I guess I guess that makes sense, right? Ratu 2025 first in Lekromaki. I like that. I could see, I mean, that would be a yeah, a sign in trade, right? Not bad. Uh Panthers are the cup favorites. Yeah. I again I know that they're at the front of the pack right now, but really the way that they're built, they're a very complete team. And I mean, they play that playoff hockey just about every game with how, you know, I know a lot of people out there are like, God, these guys are cheap shot artists or they're dirty they're annoying it's like those are the teams that you get that you're scared of the most right Tarasenko with Lundell and Lois Drinen. yeah I like that that's that's a pretty complete third line oh yeah Dangle yep yeah, Dangle's a two-time daddy I actually have his can you see it here on, on my shelf yeah I, ha I have his book um they're so big and physical yeah they got good size Bob's been being awesome for them. And I mean, this is like when Brandon Montours had a down year. Um, because man, last year he I think he finished top 10 in Norse voting. He was uh, fantastic. Right, right. Agreed. All right. Do we have any more updates here? Let's see here. Damn, dude, we've been going an hour and a half. There's still 243 people here. You guys are, are wonderful. I also, um, I, I do, uh, I have live streams like this just during regular old game nights. So uh, if you want to hang out with us more, probably hit the bell because I think a lot of people don't get those notifications. Um, we're also going to do playoff streams, all that good stuff. So let's see here. What other... Uh, possibilities here these are just what's okay those are just previous trades oh yeah the bark offices that was unbelievable Okay, I don't think we're seeing any other updates at this exact moment. Thinking of this incomplete trade. Oh, this is uh, Jay Fresh. Whoa, <laughs> that's that's mind boggling. Go heels, by the way, for anybody watching March Madness. see here you mean to tell me that the shark oh huh 
Huh. So yeah, Grant. So for the for the Sharks, Mikhail Gramland, Luke Cunning, and Jan Ruta did not practice with the team today. So something to, to keep your eye on. Gramland, I know I know Ruta has at least one more year after this year. Gramland has one more year at five million. And but the Sharks are in good are in a good enough salary cap situation to where they could actually still eat some of his of his salary next year. I could very well see that happening. Stankovin, okay, okay. Yeah, Stankovin, man. The kid's going to be such a star. Uh, oh, wait. I'm hearing Granlin and Cunnan not practicing today are just maintenance days. Uh, okay, so not, not obviously being held out for trade reasons. Jason Zucker is one of those players, though. So he should be a name to keep your eye on. Jason Zucker of the Coyotes. Granlin to the Hurricanes. There we go. I wouldn't mind that. Would you? But would he be like an upgrade over Coco Niemi? I mean, if he keeps playing like he did earlier this year, or for for most of this year, then sure. I'd be happy to make that trade with you guys. Hurricanes have all of their first round picks. Uh, Jari, land more in the offseason. A team like the Canes or Devils. Ooh, wow. That's interesting because, I mean, could they shop him and Nadelkovich? Uh, I hate to see Lindholm go for another trade so soon. He has potential. Yeah, he's been a little bit cold recently, huh? But uh, I don't know, man. They're, they've got the centers, right? It's not like they n absolutely need him if they want that sniper in uh, Jake Gensel. Kings need to get Dubois good wingers or just trade him. I don't know how the hell they're going to trade him because that contract is an albatross the way that he's been uh, producing. Vetrano to the Jets, is that is that one uh, official? I could see that happening. Vetrano, where, where you at, bud? Hmm. Not sure here. Yeah, here. Uh, let let me know um, what your source is for that cam, or just kind of, if that's a proposition, then then by all means, um, that's I think that still sounds pretty good. Oh my god, chat's absolutely flying. Still two hundred thirty seven people. Whoa. Okay, got it, Cam. Uh, Cheyenne, I, good to have you here. Because the Predators, I know that their winning streak came to an end last night, but still, you got to give them some stick taps. Uh, Really interesting for them. I wonder what how busy Trotz is going to be, right? Because he's talked about possibly selling off like Tyson Berry or uh, I don't know if he said Lausanne. He said Alexander Carrier. But at this at the same time, the asking price has to be convincing because they're in a wild card spot fairly comfortably. Uh, it certainly helps that the Blues lost last night too. Although the Kraken, uh, they won back to back games at least. So yeah, nine game point streak, right? I mean, there's no way you're stopping that that shot, that that high stick goal. That would have been crazy. It looked like because it like what went off his helmet or it looked it looked like that. Anyway, uh, but yeah, congrats though on still a very great winning streak, the second best in franchise history. Uh, for Toronto to the Canes, yeah. Uh, J man, what's going on? This is crazy. Well, um, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to hear Hannafin to. I would I would say L A would be a big possibility. Vegas's name has come up as well. Possibly if they're going to put uh, Martinez on IR, right? You know, they like to swing for the fences, but really, I think Tampa is the team that, that needs to land him the most. Uh, he would fill their need the best. Pulled the YouTube concert at the sphere. Yeah, really? That's right. That, that was after the 9 loss. Damn. Great point. How many trades are going to happen today? I mean, the Gensel trade is kind of supposed to happen, right? Wenberg to the Rangers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like that's going down. Uh, good trade for them. Nashville trading some UFAs. Yeah, exactly. So those those are a couple of the defensemen that I just talked about. 
could they package one of their like younger forwards as part of that? Sure. Uh, by the way, Tommy Novak, uh, they got him for a steal. And I'm I'm doing I'm doing great. Thank you. When you have all when it's this busy, when you have as many twisters as yourselves showing up here, it's a great day. I don't care if I sprain my elbow after this. It's been a great day. Uh, Vegas has a lot of defensemen. I mean, yeah, but I mean, to have Martinez out, that is a bit of a void to fill. And and God, is White Cloud even playing for them right now? I think I think he is. I forgot because he missed a lot of time. Uh, David Panyota minor tweet uh, with as many people. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, this is our second biggest crowd ever. Um, our biggest crazy enough was this time exactly last year when, of all players, Tyler Bertuzzi got traded to the Bruins from the Red Wings. I had, I literally had, I think, 495 people concurrent. So hopefully, hopefully, is Vlad Tarasenko a rental? <laughs> We'll have to see considering he is a free agent at the end of next year. But I would think for the Panthers, I would lean more toward yes. I think I think his cap hit is what, like four or five million dollars. And with Florida, I, I I think that, for example, they would want to free up a spot for maybe like Mackie Simiskevich. Unless he's a center. Uh, but yeah, that's somebody that the fans are pretty high on. Um, that Sabres decor, yeah. <laughs> that Avalanche decor, <laughs> still pretty good. White Cloud's in. Okay, good, good. Did not see Byron. I know, right? I was like, what the hell is this? And it's a one-for-one one trade. I Like, one-for-one one trades are always the most exciting, right? Taylor Hall for Adam Larson. Uh, what, P.K. Subban for uh, Shea Weber? Has it become a liability anyway? Wow. That's that's tough to stomach, but yeah, he is getting up there in age. Uh, Toronto has recently checked in on Joel Edmondson of the Capitals. Yeah, I think that some a bit of a defensive reinforcement would behoove them. So yeah, maybe oops, maybe not swing uh, for the fences it, for uh, I know a Hannafin, but but yeah, just to bolster that position a little more that does not hurt them. I mean, hell, they've had a really nice second half, too. Uh, Nashville making no trades and push for, for the spot. I mean, that that's that's not... I think best-case scenario would be if, if they can find a way to still keep up the way that they're performing right now and just move one player for, like, a third-round draft pick. But Nashville... Let's look at Barry Trotz as Nashville Predators. I am a huge Barry Trotz fan. One of my favorite uh, figures in hockey. Look at, look at that. They got great draft capital right already. So, yeah, they don't need to pressure them to make a move like that and trade everything, uh, including Saros. But, yeah, Trot said it's looking unlikely that they will trade him. And that was like a, a, a week ago, I want to say. Uh, Toronto looking for defensemen. Do I think Jake Gensel to the Canes happens? <sighs> no, I don't I don't think in that division that they, they want to trade him. I, I, I can't see him staying in the Metro like that. I, I just can't. The Canes have decent draft capital, though. They do. I don't know. How about this? If if he ends up as a, a, a hurricane, you can take a screenshot of this of this tweet and I will, or of, of this uh, comment here. Just take a screenshot right now. And if you're correct, if he goes to the Hurricanes, I will gladly send you a Twisted Rister Hockey T-shirt. How about that? Uh, Avalanche, are they cooking? Maybe. I think that Landeskog's return could be a factor, though. You know, I'm sure that 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 Sackick and McFarland probably plotted this out two ways, right? It's like, okay, what happens if we don't have Landeskog in our lineup? What will we do? Or what happens if we don't have Landeskog and um, Nichushkin, right? And then now the situation looks better for them on that front. So perhaps this is all that they felt they needed to do without you know trading away the kitchen sink. Uh, Florida got Giroux back. I haven't heard Claude Giroux's name, but dude, just give him the Stanley Cup already. And yet, and yet, I gotta say, a low. Uh, don't forget, Florida didn't exactly do that well when they won the President's Trophy last year. So that's something to keep your eye on. Uh, I saw something that said Hannafin is about to be traded. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, 
it still doesn't beat what Arizona has over there. With the, with, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, for reference, look at this draft capital, man. This is an ad on my screen, but look at that. <laughs> three second rounders, three third rounders, uh, four second rounders next year, three second rounders in 2026. And watch, they'll find a way to still not make the playoffs. They do have some talent, though. Vancouver is incredibly aggressive on trying to acquire Gensel. Yeah, this is becoming a thing. But where will Lindholm end up? Will he go to Boston? Could he still go to the Avalanche? Probably not. Unbelievable, though. Uh, Vegas is swooping. And, and yeah, I mean, in my trade deadline video, which I had to hide immediately because Tanev got traded and, and so did Lindholm. Um, but in my trade deadline video, I said the first team I thought of with with uh, for Gensel was the definitely uh, the Golden Knights, just, and and not just because he's a fit for a team that's you know injured at wing right now, but because again, just from a UFA standpoint, with Marcia so being a UFA, they have actually a pretty good cap and and draft pick situation. They'd be fine. Uh, who knows blended family that could always, that could break their their spell because really the I, the thing is with the Coyotes, I I consider them a team that has not qualified for the playoffs since 2012 because in 2020, if that season would have played out, there's a fairly good chance they would have still missed the playoffs because remember they extended the number of teams that got into the postseason, which I think was fair, but I, I think they would have actually not made it. Uh, please move Savard. That would be uh, fair for them because I think he's a, a free agent at the end of the year, right? Gensel on the first for Reeves. There we go. Um, the Preds could trade their big goalie Lincoln. Yeah, and you know he's been very good for them. Uh, and there's an opportunity for Askarov to to get some more playing time, right? I can see that. But the Gensel trade rumors. Well, eventually those are not going to be just rumors. For the Sharks. We aren't going to do ish in the deadline. The Stars could use some more defensive help. Yeah, after last night, right? Uh, good thing to have Tanev now, but uh, he he's going to need some time to, of course, acclimate. But yeah, I I can see the Stars at this point just you know minor minor move, right? They're not the most complete team, but they still have overall a, a good foundation for them, especially again with Stankovic. Uh Red Wings. That's a great one, golf guy. Uh, because remember, like these dudes sold off a ton at last year's deadline. Oh, Savard still has term. Mm. Well, Montreal, they're in a, a decent enough cap situation. They could probably still consume some of his salary to make that happen. Yeah, the Red Wings, I don't know. I, I think they could use more defense, um, just as much as a team like Dallas, maybe even more, right? More than, than Toronto, I'd say. So, yeah, I'd like to see them get somebody. I don't think they should be in the in the running for Hannafin though. Uh who else would be a good fit for them on defense for the Red Wings? And the goaltending market's a tough one to crack right now because again like Saros, Markstrom, those guys probably don't get moved. So I'm not entirely sure who is left over for them to trade. Would they consider moving doing something kind of like what the Avalanche did? Trading away Byram for Middlestat, right? A one for one where they have an embarrassment of riches, right? Would they trade like David Perron to somebody for like a decent defenseman? Hell, I mentioned Jalen Chatfield's name earlier. And the, the Hurricanes have lots of defensive depth. I'd like to see some sort of deal there, probably. Jalen Chatfield would, would be a good name to keep your eye on. Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, but I, I'd like to see them get someone who can, you know, shut the opposition down. And Chatfield as a third pairing defenseman is really good. Uh, Primo Montembeau, Allen. Yeah, Allen could definitely still go too. Uh, move Hall to Toronto. Oh, <laughs> oh, come on. We already know they're going to be out in the first round. Um, Oilers, uh, besides Henrique, I mean, that was a that's a pretty big move because he's had a good season for them. Are they done just yet? I, I would love to offer up Kapo, uh, Kapo Kakinen. Uh, don't let the goals against average fool you. He's had a decent season. And then that way you might have a bit of an upgrade over uh, Calvin Pickard in goal. Holy crap. Still 245 people almost two hours through this. I love it. Um, I got to turn off my heater, though. I've had it running the whole time. So just a quick BRB. 
Quick BRB. I'll be right back. Here, I got. Let me update the banner. I'll be back literally in, in about 25 seconds, okay? So, hold on. Just one second. All right. I don't even think that was 25 seconds. I think I made it in like 20. Had to go downstairs for that one though. All right. There we go. Oh boy. Well, uh, we got 15 more minutes on this stream and then I got to actually get Cortana some exercise and uh, carry on with uh, my, my production on a, a Hartford Whalers video. So that's definitely something that we can look forward to in the near future here. And who knows? More streams. Let, if, shoot, if Gensel gets moved and I'm not busy at, at the moment because I do have a commitment a little bit later today, then, then I'm game. I'm game, guys. Soros to the Devils, J-Man. Yeah, it looks like uh, Bear Trot said it's unlikely that they would trade Soros. Uh, that was something he talked about about a week ago. What else we got here? Uh, trade call is official. Alex Wenberg is a New York Ranger. Good pickup. Good pickup. Was he the one who like absolutely killed it for them in the playoffs last year? I know that Tolvanen did. He became my favorite crack in like oh instantly. Uh, Barabanov, man, that's the one thing. The Sharks. He his his trade value was so much better last year. He's not. He just does not look the same. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Toronto. Oh yeah, here we go from uh, David Panyota uh, to echo somebody recent. Uh, Kane's moves. No uh, blind doom doomé. And I'm intrigued. That's my Eastern Conference team, but I haven't seen anything about that just yet. Uh, LeBron returns pending. Ah, uh, let's see here. Who will be traded to the Kraken from the Wenberg trade? Yeah, we're still looking for that. Uh, Toronto has recently checked back on the Joel Edmondson, on Joel Edmondson of the Capitals as they continue to navigate the defensive market. Uh, by the way, Capitals defenseman uh, Erasmus Sandin has been extended five years at $4.6 million, I believe. I think that's a good deal. Uh, let's see what we have here as well. Let's see if I can find any more updates. I Don't uh, don't worry, I'll get back to comments in just a second here. Watch I was playing cheat codes. Uh, pop, pop. Yeah, I think this is pretty much all we have at this moment. Hearing Kevin Le Oh, that, that was last night. Man, Kevin LeBeg, man, what a fall off from uh, a few years ago. That was, the, that was a horrible contract that Doug Wilson signed. Shows you how good a player can be when they play with Jumbo on the third line. Shohei Otani to Vegas. Hey, hey I, I'm for it, man. Anything to, to keep him uh, away from the Dodgers. That's okay. <laughs> They'll still find a way to lose in the NLCS. Um, Doom like Dune. Okay, Adam Henrique, to, uh, that has fantasy implications. Yeah, uh, Henrique's been, he's been doing pretty damn well. And I, I mean, he's got plenty of opportunity um, given the way that the uh, Oilers have thrived, I think, in all three of their lines. And so we'll, we'll just have to see where he fits, if he's going to play first or second line. And, I mean, it opens up the possibilities when you have, like, McDavid and Dreisaitl on the same line together. You still have, like, still great talents like, you know, Nugent Hopkins and Evander Kane and Ryan. I, I'm, I'm a Ryan McLeod fan, so. I think he'll still do uh, – he should fit in well. He'll, he should get good opportunity. Uh, Seattle gets a – there we go. Thanks, Jake. And, and anybody else covering that a uh, second in 2024 and a fourth in 2025 for Wenberg. Okay. So basically the Kraken got the same for Wenberg as the Capitals did for Mantha. I think that that might still be a little bit of an underpayment, but it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. Is Vegas the Dodgers? Oh, absolutely. So, so Dean, Dean probably doesn't want to hear that, but I, i I see that. It's a pretty one to one. Um, all right, let's see here. 
They will try to move Allen. His value is taking a hit this year. How is Jake Allen this year? I thought I thought he was doing pretty well for them. I mean, given the point the point that he's at in his career. Yeah, yeah, those numbers look horrific, right? An 892 save percentage for this year. Uh, his goals against his goals, uh, um, goal saved above average is um, not good, but it's not as bad as last year. Uh, uh, thoughts on the Flyers getting a first for Walker? I thought that was bitching for them. I, I think that's a good pickup. So uh, good job for them, really. Um, and they're first rounders for the next couple of years. Let's just quickly revisit that one more time. Because I think they have, what, two first rounders for each in the next two years. And then by then, Mishkov will be um, called up, right? So a uh, nice job there uh, from uh, uh, Danny Briere. Okay, I want to make sure I didn't say Chris Drury. Danny Briere. There we go. Uh, a few stinkers from Doug Wilson. Yeah, I know. The Sharks are st- going to be still recovering from that for a couple of years. But Greer, he's pulled off two trades that have worked out really well so far um, in the Carlson deal and the, and the Timo Meyer deal as well. So I'm willing to you know give him some time and be a little patient. Arizona will take the Robin Lander co- contract. That that seems like a very Arizona thing to do. Yeah, man, that's a name I haven't heard in, in quite some time, uh, which is a shame, man. I, I I mean for him to still at least have been able to, you know, have a good career with how things started and his, you know, battles with substance abuse. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been tough for him since, uh, you know, that first year or year and a half in Vegas. Canes really need a big goal scorer and by chance a goalie. Yeah. You, you know, if they need somebody to kind of share the net with um, Kachekov in the playoffs, I mean, he's, he's looked really good. So that's, that's good to see. But like my, my gripe with Carolina is that it doesn't matter who's in gold; they're going to get hurt, and th- and it could very well happen. It happens in that game, so I don't want to see the same thing happen to uh, Takuchi. But uh, if they got Gensel, man, God, that would just make them pretty lethal. Honestly, uh, I love Aho. Uh, Svechnikov. How how many goals does Svechnikov have this year? Because it's. It's one of the two where it's like there's one guy who's been more quiet than I would have expected this year. Jarvis is, by the way, Jarvis has been killing it this year. Look, I mean, the numbers, the 48 points in 61 games, that doesn't look eye popping, but he's been clutch and he's been making a lot of plays that set up clutch goals. Yeah, Natchez, I thought I was expecting a little bit more from him. Terrifying and good season. Yeah, but the 13 goals from Svechnikov, that's a bit of an eyesore. He really could have used him in the playoffs last year. Anyway, Canes could use Toffoli. Yeah, Toffoli. I'm surprised we haven't heard any any other mention uh, of his name. You know, as a, as a trade uh, piece. Uh, any trade updates from the past half hour? Really, the big one was the Wenberg trade to the Rangers, and uh, going to the Kraken is a 2024 second round pick and a 2024. 2025 fourth round pick, excuse me. Very similar to what we saw with the Anthony Mantha trade from the Capitals to the uh, Golden Knights. Do I see anybody beating the Panthers? Um, theoretically, I I don't. Except you gotta you gotta remember, there are a good chance they take on the Lightning. I know the Lightning aren't the same team, but they know how. And I know that the Panthers smoked them recently. But you know, I I think that, that Tampa still has like a last gasp in them unless that was really last year that's one thing the other thing is that if the panthers won the president's trophy it doesn't matter who wins the president's trophy i will not pick them to win the stanley cup i might not even pick them to go to the stanley cup but uh i think they're that they're the most complete team and they they are built for the the playoffs uh any any news on landeskog will he play again um so uh one of our abs fans earlier was saying that landeskog is back skating with the team and that that thrills me so they still have what about um, five weeks until the playoffs. So that could be great for them. Uh, but I still think it's good that they, you know, got middle stat to help with their, um, you know, their need at center and uh, specifically, and also just to give them a little bit more uh, scoring versatility. 
And uh, getting Val- Valerian Shushkin back is huge for them, uh, just based on what he can do from any any spot on the ice, honestly. PK, you know, <laughs> scoring breakaway goals, like that sort of thing. Um, so it's kind of like he's he's an Landeskog. It's I don't want to I don't want to diminish his value, but he's a nice to have because they're they're already very prepared for like how they're going to play uh, without him. But uh, yeah, to see him skating again is awesome. I love seeing that. Uh, Vegas wouldn't qualify for a wild card without Thompson. Yeah, I think that his uh, value this year has been kind of understated just based on how awesome Hill has played. Uh, the 2024 fifth or 25, 25 fourth is Dallas's pick. Oh, okay. I don't know what trade that would be from, but uh, Panthers, Hurricanes, dogfight for these. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, well, you you know, but that series was way closer than it lets on. Not to mention, honestly, from the eye test, and I know it's a bias coming from me, but did the Hurricanes easily? I'm using air quotes here, so I'm not Rod Brindamore, but the Hurricanes easily won two, two of those games, if not three of them. Uh, Hannafin to Tampa said, I know, I'm, I'm waiting to see that. Or Hannafin to the Kings, possibly. Uh, last team was 2013 Chicago. And that was, yeah, that was lockout shortened. Uh, good good point. Speaking of LA, ah, uh, man, if the Sharks would have found that series between them and the Kings in 2013, that would have been, uh, the Sharks nearly had that series. It was such a good one. Um, Trade just happened. What? What's that? What's that? What's that? Uh, Hill hasn't been as good as of late. That's okay. You want it to happen right now, right? So then he has some time to get it back. Uh, Hirsch says his trade deadline today. Uh, ba ba ba. Let's go here. Okay, that's the Wenberg trade. Uh, let's see here. Okay, that was earlier. Okay, that was the the Oilers trade for Henrique. Yeah, it's crazy how, especially going into this year, you had Hellebuck was a pending free agent. Soros, right, on a team that was rebuilding. And, uh, you know, everyone always talks about trading John Gibson and the other name I'm, I'm missing here. Hellebuck, Soros, and... Mark, well, Markstrom recently, right? Like we thought it was going to be a huge deal or deadline or season just to get a goaltender, right? Like a top tier goaltender. And none of that's been happening at all. Uh, that series would have been a sweep for the, so close. It could have been a sweep. I'm not going to say that you're wrong. Cause you're not, uh, but the deadline was today. Exactly. Right. I want the Hurricane sneak and peeky. Abracadabra trade for Kempe. Who, who are you going to send the other way? Jacob Slavin? God only knows what you'd have to cough up to do that. But yeah, Kempe's been having a down year. Good thing they have Quentin Byfield, who was my breakout, like my number one breakout player of the year. Okay, we're, we're in the final two minutes, everybody. And then as much as I want to as Derek Zoolander would say, continue talking about this conversation. I will have to bounce. Um, so we'll see if there's any other trade here. And well, if there if there really is later, like later today, if Gensel, right? Gensel gets dealt. I'll go live unless uh, I'm out of the house. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, please do leave a thumbs up. And uh, if you want more streams like this, especially during the playoffs, then, then do subscribe if, if you're new here. And um, it'd be great to, of course, have more hockey conversations with you in the near future uh this has been a fantastic group of fans i appreciate all the your patience first of all in me getting to your comments i know i didn't get to absolutely everything but hey you know what i'll make a deal with you if you have any more questions i didn't answer then why don't you see the video description down below because we do have a fantastic discord community fans of all teams here people are posting the the news as it's happening we have chat rooms for every team there everyone's really friendly um Things are mostly like PG-13 on the channel. So if you're here to talk about a fun sport and uh, do so with some wonderful people who I've never met in person, but I'm sure are stand-up individuals, then yeah, I cordially invite you to join our Discord. So there we are. Uh, Renee, what's going on? Um, Let's see, your future consider... Oh, I think I'm jumping in here. Uh, Should trade Soros now? 
if they want to build for the future. Well, yeah, Askarov, right? Askarov's the goalie of the future. Man, Nashville. Whoever is the goaltending coach for Nashville, they they should just they should get seven figure salaries just by default. Like this goes all the way back to Tomas Vokun, right? They've always had such good goaltenders over there. It's fun, uh, and I I love Nashville too. So I want to see them get a cup. All right, we've hit two hours. I hate to see you guys go, but maybe I'll be back as early as a couple hours from now. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Ciao, and thanks for the and uh, memberships by the way.